Hello, welcome. It's mini hardlore time live from FYA Fest in Tampa, Florida. How you doing, Bo? I'm doing really well. Me too. Uh, thanks to this very special guest, <laughs> multi-layered reasoning behind this, mm -hmm. Tom Sheehan, indecision, axe to grind legend. This is this is the the worlds colliding between podcasts. I'm very excited to be here. How you doing, Tom? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm, I just came back to say hello, and then. I'm Tom from Two Hundred Stab Wounds right now, and That's I'm just right. in. <laughs> we started. We started talking core. We started talking the core. Started talking, talking the, lore. the lore, and we were yeah. like, we need to just start rolling on. Like, this. Yeah, why aren't we recording this? Yeah, yeah. We saw very quickly that we can be like talking about Marauder or something, and you'll be like, you know, I was at the Master Killer record release, and this happened. Does that feel like an old man thing to do, though? No, quite no. honestly, because we would do the same thing. We would do the same about about like, oh, Aladdin, Aladdin, yeah, Aladdin Junior. Yeah, go. Right. Yeah, yeah, you right. see the Kitchen Nightmares episode? It's great. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, yeah, it was on Kitchen Nightmares. Oh yeah, it wasn't. It was pre Aladdin Junior. See this? See, I got, I got it. I'm There's really, some more. Yeah, see, this There's is what more. we do on the show. <laughs> but uh, you've got a story kind of for everything because you've you've lived through all these different eras of hardcore at this point. You're a lifer. I'm like the Forrest Gump. I feel like a hardcore. I've been something that I'm like, I can't believe I was at that. Like, what's what's something that you th that you think about fondly that uh, maybe maybe it was twenty thirty years ago that you still look at and you go that you feel like you were there yesterday? Well, we were talking about like seeing uh, one of the Crown of Thorns like early shows. It was uh, like the, one of the last Super Bowls that they did in the city. It was a place called the Grand. It was in like uh, near like Fourteenth Street, like Union Square, and just being like seventeen and like dodging scary felons. Yeah. I can what, still feel like I was there. What was discovering music like? In that, in that time without internet without any yeah. of that I know I'm like that old like no that. but but oh, like yeah. it puts it into perspective how simultaneously easy it is for people to access music now and how difficult it can be as a band to stand out right it becomes almost disposable if like you don't have to so it's weird like I, I talked about this on Instagram every once in a while that it's like People were dicks and very kind of like the whole gatekeeper thing that people fight about now was a thing. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you're not, you shouldn't have that fucking burn purple long sleeve. Like, you're a new jack. Why the hell, you know, like, or well, like. I feel that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, you shouldn't have that fucking, mar that one marauder. Absolutely, like that's that, you know. for me. Do you have every marauder shirt just as a total? No, aside? not every, but. Is there like a Holy Grail marauder shirt? I have my Holy Grail. I have the first one. So you have, okay. Yeah, the like, the, the tribal. The yeah, yeah, yeah. With the little red skull in the middle. I've got that, so I'm good to go. Made a early real ones of James wearing every single one of them. And then like just under the arm pits, it's like this. <laughs> it's like, why are my shirts all V'd out, man? Uh, honestly, the, the, the pits started to tear. So maybe, that, maybe no, I'm, no. I'm now oh, connecting no that maybe it was James. Um, yeah, just like kind of learning from your friends and just sort of like reading, like the whole like thanks right, list. like thanks list. Yeah. But it's true. It's true. Oh no, it, yeah, it's, you still we, we did it, and the internet media fire existed. You know, well, yeah, that yeah. Helped too. You can be oh. like, you to today, the whatever best. media fire. Yeah, yeah. like, boom. Blocked, I discovered. Uh, I discovered. Warzone because of Youth of Today thinking Warzone and like right. Youth Defense League because of Youth of Today. Right. You know what I mean? Like I used to do stuff like that all the time. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it was like mixtapes that your friends would give you and stuff like that. Like, because you could put 10, 7 inches on a 90 minute tape or whatever. That's right. It's like, oh, cool. This is how it, like, or if they recorded on like the wrong speed, that's what you were used to. And then oh, you're yeah. Like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Neglect doesn't sound like this. No, got, yeah. got, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Got the first R&R &R 7 inch yeah. and played it on the wrong speed. It th thought, thought, it? thought his voice was like way too high. It's mm. like that can't be it, but it's like he has a high voice. Mm. So then it was like just enough, <laughs> you know. Like we had that to slow it down to thirty three. Yeah. Probably pretty dope. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, big pretty time. good. But yeah, I mean, I think it was like one of those things. Where you just you know you learn from your friends, and then you go to shows, and you try not to get fucking murdered. Or sometimes you get like punched in the face, and then you go, "This is cool. I can't wait to do this again." And then you come back, and they go, "Oh, he came back. That's cool." Right? Yeah, yeah. Like I got hit once so hard, like it was over the music. <sighs> Like in my whole temple. room, heard it. Yeah, yeah. People were like, "Yo, you're right." I'm like, "Yeah, I think so." <laughs> it was, it was, it was at a Marauder show. Okay, a wow. minus at a Marauder wow. show. Wow. Pre Master, were you were you at the Master Killer record yeah, release? Man, come on, dude. Who played the Master Killer record release? Or right, here's a weird thing, and I'm, I'm not to give hard lore. There was a time that Marauder wasn't that big in New York. Sure, I believe that. Very I strange. That. I love them from like I remember going to like a record store to buy the demo. Mm. Because it was like, oh, it's like the guy from the neighborhood. Because sure. I would know people that knew them 
by their like government names. Oh. And they'd be like, you know Javier? I go, no. And they're like, they call him Saab. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yeah. I've gotten kicked by him and his friends many times. Hell yeah. Um, I heard of them very, very early on. Yeah. For me, early on, um, as being a big Madball guy. And a friend of mine being like, you should check out Marauder. They should be the flagship New York band. Mm. Like, in my opinion, they're the one. And it was like no one in Chicago at that time. That's, and that, that conversation comes up a lot. You know, like you hear that about All Out War in the city a lot. That like the city was late to All Out War. But that's the thing that we're finding as as hardcore po- podcasters, podcasters about a, a year in. You guys are five years deep. You're talking about these things you love and accidentally finding your, your like tastemakers by accident you know mm. yeah i mean it just I, and that's awesome if i can get someone to listen to like confusion or dark side because yeah. i talked about them on a podcast like that's i know what they did for me of course how much i loved them you know what i mean so mm. it's fucking you know like but i think like yeah like a band like marauder they were like you guys were talking with dan i don't know when this will run but like you talked about with dan king nine about mm-hmm. bands bands mm-hmm. yeah i feel like marauder was a band's band really with everyone just- i knew were like like, Handiri was the biggest band in New York. Right. Like, bar none, no questions asked. And, like, Marauder was great from the get-go, but they weren't as big. Like, they were probably bigger outside of New York. The songs are just, they're so nuanced, and there's so much to them, but it, you can't really tell that upon first listen. So that's why somebody in a band listens to that and goes, how the fuck There's still drum things that I catch. Oh, big time. I mean, yeah. Vinny was incredible, and he wrote most of that wrote stuff. Wrote most of the songs. That's right. right. Lyrics and, and music. That's right. Have you seen pictures of him recently? It was great. Uh-huh. He's like an MMA guy. Really? He's oh, like really? half the size. He might have emailed Brody. I think he's a, a, a wrestling, wrestling fan. fan. Wrestling so guy. that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. 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 But the, yeah, I mean, those like, were like the local dudes that then, you know, we got to see a bunch of times, and then they changed singers, and I was like, I'm not gonna show sure if I'm gonna like this. And then Master Color came out. I'm like, Oh, that oh, was the best thing ever. This yeah. is incredible. Like, yeah. I didn't, like, and then it took me a while, like, for those demo, like, to hear like "Life Is Fucking Pain" yeah. as compared to "Life Is." It was yeah. like it's gonna take me a minute to get used to. It's it like pro. Is pain. Yeah, like, no, I knew it forever. And I was like, I don't know about this. And then, or hearing "Besiege the Masses" with lyrics yes. as opposed to him yeah. seeing it live with no words. No, you know, and and Jorge's great. Incredible front man. I feel like, yeah. like a super overlooked like front man. Like, like not, I feel like not even in terms of like vocal performance, but just as an overall being. Yeah, front man. Just yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And vocally, I mean, like he's his DNA is in everything. Today. Everything. Like anyone that's everyone sounds like him. Or we're all we're all doing him. Oh yeah, like yeah. you. Yeah, like how you like. I thought that was great because it's like when COA was like, "What are you do? Yeah. What yeah. are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh fuck, we all." He, do he asked us two days before that, and we thought about it for two days, just being like, "Man, we can't wait to ask everybody." everybody. We have that's his blessing brilliant. to yeah. make it a universal thing. That who, should be like the corner. Who do you do, Tom? I do Rob Fish from 108. Oh. That would be my guess. Or, or Zach Inside Out. Are you vegan? Straight edge, but I'm vegan. Vegetarian. My man. Well, but no. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> close. Halfway. Vegetarian? Yeah. You eat cheese. I mean, I go somewhere with you, and yeah. like, we, I just get it without the meat. I, I love 108. One of my do favorite really? bands ever. Love I didn't that. know that. Killer of the Soul. Oh, burning, burning Fight Fest in Chicago. I was there. 108 played. Yeah. Um, who's the the guitar Vic. player? Vic. Vic. Yeah. Did he ride his guitar his guitar down the stairs at the metro? He was he put his guitar string side down on the ground and paddled on it like a surfboard, a Les Paul. Out the side, down the stairs of the metro. You're sick to your stomach watching that. Well, I was in the balcony. <laughs> I was like, oh, I wonder where he went. But I heard from other people he that he did this. Yeah. And then he was he had a wireless pack on, so it's making noise. Got into like a corner in the green room and just started like rolling around. While they're playing? Like it was, the, the, it was the end song. of the set. Oh. It was so the it was last like song. feedback, feedback, feedback. I, I can't like, believe Bruh. you knew that story. I was there. I was, I'm Forrest Gump. You I was there. Were you playing Gump Convicted at the time? Yeah. yeah. I was, Charlie's my buddy. Yeah, yeah. We toured with him a bunch. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. right. MPB, well, and he was out with Just like, saw him the other day. Stuff. Oh, shit. He's out in the Bay Area. Oh, good for him. So we played a Bay Area show. And hey, Charlie. I haven't seen you in probably 20 years, but he was always cool. Yep. Um, I lived with him. I lived with him at the time. Oh no way! Okay, at the fireside house, and after burning fight, I like opened up our front door, and singer from Killing Time was just sitting there, just like, "Hey, how you doing, kid? How's it going, kid?" <laughs> no joke. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Hello, Anthony." Yeah, I feel like they're underrated. Killing Time is Killing the best time? hardcore band. Brightside is Brightside the, be- the best hardcore. Brightside is ever. the best hardcore. Record. I say that 100. percent But like, if they came to Los Angeles tomorrow, would it be? Bands like you know, Mosh or Survive for bands only, 
do kids get into that? I don't know. I think I, it, I, think, I think it would perfect. be a band's band. I think it's a band's band thing. thing. Which is wild. At, this is hardcore be, a couple it would be years me ago. Me and James Vitale fucking skanking yeah. it up. Just it. yeah. yeah. At, right. at, this is hardcore a few years ago. I literally ran into Alec. Yeah, like, yeah. that's what happens. <laughs> what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. Like how you were saying, like all the kids at Mosh for your bands got into the sick bands. Like you're that for Killing Time. That makes sense. Wow. Wow. Right in Marauder. I'm wow. Do you remember the underdog set at that show? At, uh, at, at Burning Fight? Yeah, they were amazing. Dude. The, the they, like, slow right. skank part yeah. in mass movement, and people were doing the, like, pre-two-step, but, like, to a sk- It was just one of the coolest things I'd ever witnessed. It's funny know? that we can talk about these things and, and then, like, transitioning into, into another, and you probably watched that happen in real time. Yeah, pretty much. What was that like? Weird. I didn't like it at first. Yeah. I was like, Mosh guy. I like, like, I like Breakdown. Yeah, but yeah. they're hard. I feel like Into Another hard. is harder than Underdog. No. To me. Dude. Some Mosh parts. In the, it, to, in the core like, of its being. But were Two you, snowflakes? Are you moshing as two? No. Running into walls? But then yeah. running into walls is fucking And then what's the, ne- the next song? Were you ever like a youth crew kid? Love the band, but I was never like sweatshirt over t- like t-shirt over sweatshirt okay. guy. Because I, I was like I, a youth of the today guy, girl of this guy, like all. That. I think if you were a youth crew kid, and Underdog had like an edge to it. No, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get and, it. And I so to me that's like harder than into another. Yeah, and you like. But then into my another face, goes and dan and dan and dan. True. And dan, 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 dan. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they were a band that I got into like later. Like later into it because I, you know, I wanted to see Underdog. Of course, you know. But. I loved him right right away into another connection with me in a way. because that's the first. song you're like, all yeah. right, yeah. That I makes sh- that actually makes perfect that sense. Like, yeah, for me. and yes. I liked Rush. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, of course. So of course. I was like, yeah. yeah, this is great. But it was always weird because those bands were like, it was like them, Quicksand, were like kind of separate from like hardcore. Sure, they didn't play hardcore shows really, which is bizarre. Like I saw like into another with like seaweed, and that's all they're playing now. Like uh, that's who would play in New York. Right. It would be like into another seaweed. Into another now they'll Texas play with reason. fucking King Nine. You know? Yeah, and it would be like, like oh, whatever. great show. Yeah. yeah, right, right. But then it was sort of like very, very different. And like he wore shiny shirts. What year did you start going to hardcore shows? Probably like nineteen ninety one. Wow, Birth, that's when the year I was born. I was fifteen. Wow. Yeah. What, thanks for making me feel old. August thirty first. Um, we're pretty close. September twenty first. So we're like, <laughs> are you uh, Virgo? Virgo. Boom. Come I'm on. a Virgo. We're I'm here. a cusp. But whatever the hell they and do. So this is why. Whatever people say. That's why we get along. Yeah, we're right there. We like so, wrestling. We like yeah. Who? Please, because I, I have I have not talked to many. We talked to Carl from Earth Crisis a little bit about like being around when the youth crew mm. was like dying. Obviously, the paradigm shift. Yes, the shift from youth crew into like dark. What right. did what what Vogel has quoted to have said? What integrity did to Youth Crew? I mean, he's right because I think integrity sounds like Judge with Metallica. I mean, early that's early integrity, absolutely. Like, and I, yeah, I mean, I think, but I mean, like in New York, integrity wasn't a thing Mm. for many reasons. Yeah, even before that wasn't like a thing. (laughs) Right, right. We had our own fucking. We had demise. We had like Mm. we didn't need this. Dude, demise, wildly underrated. Demise is one of those things, and it's probably because of the recording that it's wild. Because when you when you like decipher what is happening musically there, Beta was a Hoya, Hoya friend of the show. Great dude. Uh, those Beto songs like, yeah. are unbelievable, mm. and they were like kids, kids playing like, the craziest riffs you've ever heard. They understood like music theory and song structures without probably knowing what any of that shit. Meant. No, and they just knew it, and then just and then they were then that was it. Mm. Yeah, and I think I, mean, I think if they got like a remastered. If you want to talk to your brother? I don't know, maybe. I think he's done it privately for himself. <laughs> like, so he's got like a I hanging have version. Yeah, of I've got it. Great, it yeah. sounds great. <laughs> um, but I think like if they had like a discography that got out there, I think like I mean it has. I mean Soul Search. It's, yeah. I mean like obviously, yeah, of course. But it's all like oh, I got this on Disgrace, you know, blogs Disgrace, and quartered. Yeah, exactly. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Whatever the hell. Like Disgrace covered the, the the dawn on their yeah. on their LP, and a lot of people think it's an original song because it just makes sense. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You know, like. Uh, it's fucking They're unbelievable Either if you have a friend With a media fire link And that's it Like it doesn't exist Which sucks Because yeah. I feel like A lot of that stuff Needs to be put out there Like Yeah What are some of the earliest Hardcore so, shows You remember going to Well there was a local place Called the Crazy Country Club In the neighborhood I grew up in Which is called Sunset Park in Brooklyn uh, One of my I early literally know About that because of Marauder Yeah that's literally Where <laughs> I went literally. And that was the show That I got hit Over the music <laughs> Because so it was like A local place So like mm. all their friends Would come Right they didn't like hardcore, mm. but it was like, oh, cool. 
we can, like beat up people and it's like the music i literally that got, was that that's a, a lot of stories i hear from that era that's a very common thread it's yeah like, oh biohazard's fine i never heard him but i just want to like yeah it's like you can but like my graffiti my murder. graffiti artist friends and i are gonna go yeah. and like, hang I can out just, like, beat up people yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's cool like right. yeah right yeah um hmm. one of the earliest shows i went to was like it was like dark side confusion i saw stark weather a lot i loved stark, stark weather mm. Um, like Lament. I don't know if you guys like. Are you familiar with them at all? Mm-mm. It was it, so it was Maximum Penalty with okay. a different singer. Oh, okay. Um, they had a record out like really early on. I forget what the name of the label was. That put out like early Clutch records and like. Mm. Um, but yeah, like like all like Brooklyn, like Confusion, Dark Side, Marauder. Um, so like Demise a bunch. Um, yeah, which is like a local like a venue that I could walk to. Right. Cool. So like you know our high school friends like we were all in high school together. We're like. I like this. And like we'd all go on like a Thursday night to this crazy country club, which is like where Andrew Dice Clay started. Oh, so it, was shit. A co- it was a comedy club that they let hardcore kids do shows on. That's Thursday where the nights. Hickory Dickory Doc did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Good old thing. Mother Goose, huh? He actually stole that from somebody. Yeah, from Marauder. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was like the intro. And he's like, yeah, it is a good idea. Um, but yeah, like they would literally, like, there was this thing. It was, it's actually, I mean, in retrospect, it was like so fucked up. So. You'd have to walk past the bar to get into the venue. Mm. The bartender had a button that would shoot air out. So, like, when women would walk by, he'd go, oh, oh, no. and it would, like, blow up people's skirts and stuff. Not a lot of women at 1992 fucking no. hardcore shows in yeah. Brooklyn, but, like, for the comedy shows and stuff, like, that's what they would do. Like, oh, it was no. a lot of, like, walk a walk up plays. Like, that. then they'd have, like, Jesus Black Christ. Agony Marauder play, like, a fucking, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, like, Life Agony on the demo. Like that era, That's like crazy. the second demo, like the more singy demo, not the shit right. terror demo. De- is that the depression? Yes. Yeah. Like all the songs that ended up on River Runs, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, when like Mina had like the keyboard right. and like made her own like so awesome. It's so fucking cool. So cool. cool. Um, yeah, you mentioned being at the Re- River Runs Red record release as well. Yeah, because we were talking to a buddy of mine that we were coming down, like came down with, we were talking about it, and I remember being like, and he didn't believe me, but I feel like I have like this like brain that I go, I, I remember this, like yeah, yeah. that they they used the the samples of all the um, the the uh, voicemails as the intro, just all together. Yeah, and then like it ends with the mother screaming. Yeah, yeah. And them going into that song, um, uh, Plexiglass Gate from, no, 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 but I know, and no, which is where I first heard uh, Only Living Witness, Twitching Tongues, which is on that fucking record, the okay. the comp, the um. East Coast Assault. Wow. Have you ever heard that? Of course. All right. Yeah. Dude, I, yeah. I forget that you, you're like, you guys are such students we're in the game. In. We're nerds. You have everything. Dude. Yeah, we're dorks. <laughs> like, your plex must be insane. You got a plex? I know you got a plex. I'm on, I'm on the piss tunes. Yeah. It's a, I heard about that. It's a secret yeah. society. Yeah. If you ever want it, I can send you stuff for the piss tunes. Plex, like demos and plex stuff. me up, dude. I'll hit you. I'll hit yeah, you up with yeah, some stuff. I'd love to be in your server. I don't have a server, but I can send you stuff to put on the server. Like I have, I like, can't upload to it, but I can receive. I can okay, or you can, can share it yeah, with yeah, whoever exactly. owns that. There's some stuff on there that you'd be like, "Wow, that's, how the hell do you have? Yeah, this? How do you have that? Yeah, yeah." Bands like, that played CBs one time. I love that. Like stuff. the recording from that yeah, show from and that's live it. Recording. I have because I, I talked to you about this, and I don't know. I don't trust anyone to give anyone my original Marauder demo to upload this. Mm-hmm. But I have Vinny singing "Life Is Pain." That's crazy. As like a sort of like, here's how you're supposed to sing it. Mm. So the it's dude, nice to know that that's how that band operates. Yeah, because that's a common thing. Yeah, and you feel that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And and uh, there was this dude Frank Collins that played in Marauder and like Sub Zero and Confusion. That like he had it and he like gave it to me. He ended up dying. Like he ended up passing mm. away in like a bike accident. But like he was like one of the early guitar players in all those bands. Mm. And he's like, you want to hear this? And I was like, this is ridiculous. And I literally flipped over my Marauder tape and I taped it on the other side. So I have that and this band Wrench. Hmm. Have you familiar with Wrench no. from Brooklyn? Two bass players, no guitar. <laughs> incredible like sex prisoner. They, they're doing but that, not. Yeah. But it, incredibly, one of the guitars is one of the basses is tuned like a guitar. Oh, cool! I'll send it to you. It's actually yeah, really interesting. Awesome. I mean, I, you've been nice I'll, now. You're I like, love that. A, sounds awesome. I love a gimmick. What can I say? Yeah. They, but they would play with Life Vacuum all the time. Cool. Mm. Super heavy. Very weird. Yeah. Yeah. Two bases. So you're you're five years deep into. Uh, Axe to grind and to, into the premier hardcore podcast. You know? The, the first premier. one I ever heard of, for sure. It was like, f- wow, finally some guys talking about this. this I mean, there been other ones. Snitch, like Damien's yeah, done one, but like I feel like this is the most like hard let's talk about. Yeah, you're like, talking dumb. about Marauder. You well, know? you know so what I'm it like, was? Finally, it was the. Without being too controversial, it was like the COVID episode for show back episode where I became oh, no aware. Oh, okay, and I like listened. 
And was that like a thing? Like, was, did people get hip to it because we talked about that show? I, th- I well, I just think I think the it was the Tompkins Square Park yeah, yeah. show, mm-hmm. which was controversial. Yeah, just that yeah. because it was the early mid days of COVID and feelings weren't quite where they are now. And so right. it was, and it was funny that like it it opened back like a month later. Yeah, yeah, like, right. We did right. the God's Say pop up a month after. Yeah, that. and it was like that's so sick that you guys did. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you like, know, there was taking that bullet, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Exactly. You know, just yeah. loud individuals on the internet, yeah. whatever, weren't happy with it, and like whatever. But I was curious on what the discourse was because right. I didn't really, I didn't know how I felt about it, and right. I felt like if you were outside, it's probably not mm-hmm. that big of a deal. Right. That's how I right. felt about it, and we're it wasn't. Year, we're years past. That. Yeah, yeah, we're way past that. Yeah, but at the time, it was kind of like so. The thing. I would see Madball in a park on a nice April day every Sunday if I was locked <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I would yeah, do yeah, that yeah. every Sunday that's a, that's if that was a thing. Them, if that was an option? Yeah. 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 Get brunch and go see Madball? Sounds Going to lovely. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Like, a little you know, egg like, sandwich, you know? You know what I'm saying? Like an egg and cheese on a bagel, yeah, a bagel, whatever you Yeah, the Aki way. Back, you know? Dude, oh, all right. Get the fuck out Sure, sure. Come on. Um, But yeah, that's when I became aware. And I was, what I was, what interested me was it was like kind of, taboo-ish to talk about even which is insane to think about now but i was like oh these guys are going to talk about it i want to hear what yeah i mean it was worrisome i'm not gonna lie yeah but like i know like so i knew a lot of people involved so i'm like i know how to talk about this that like they i know them well enough that they know where i'm coming from like if it was just like pat coming out there i'm like pat's gonna get his fucking neck broken but (laughs) i was able he just doesn't care but but then i go places yeah Yeah, yeah, i'm outside i'm like you need to not say this stuff (laughs) because i actually go to shows yeah Yeah. you know like i'm like you know i'm like he speaks for you now (laughs) yeah he speaks for you and bob now yeah i'm like i would wish you'd stop saying stuff like that because like (laughs) i'm gonna go to some place and someone's gonna knock my block off because Mm. they'd be like wait a minute I mean, people confuse me and him on our voices, which I don't hear. It. That's mm. I don't hear it. Pat's is dis- very, very Albany. Yeah, very, oh very. Albany. That voice has eaten dinosaur barbecue <laughs> ten <laughs> to twenty times, you know, easily. But yeah, I mean, it was one of those things. I was like, this needs to be talked about. Like, I feel like if we didn't talk about it, we'd like not be doing like not our job, but like we have a responsibility. Absolutely, because it was Ig- such a thing. Ignoring it would be weird. But we would be able to do it in a nuanced way that we weren't being like, I can't believe they did the show, yeah. and at the same time being like, I get why people were bummed out. I get it. Yeah. I get yeah. both sides. There are two sides. Right. Yeah. Right. And like, they're adults. Yeah. That mm-hmm. like, like, if they were able to like pay like, d- adults that did this that do this full time. Mm-hmm. That just got this taken away from them for two years. Oh yeah, if they were to play outside and make a couple bucks, pay their fucking mortgage, I can't be like, how dare you? Absolutely. No, no, and I, you have a choice. You don't have to go. Exactly, easy enough. Do you find it hard? I mean, you keep up with new bands. You, you, oh, I love it. It's that's your shit, and it, I, I really, I respect that because like, where I, we're, I'm 31. I'm bad at it, and that's still it's difficult. I'm bad. But at do it. you feel like have you gotten into more new stuff doing this? Yeah, no, big time. And I think that's helped me too. To big kind time. of okay. be like, it's part of like, it's not like I do research, but it's like people will send me stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, here's this demo I'm doing, or here's this. Like, and it's like, oh, cool. Like, but I think I've been more privy to stuff just because it's like I talk about it every week. I better learn. Like, yeah, I we. Can't it has. It has to be. Yeah, or else, why like, are you doing? I saw Harvest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. like, I can't do. I love Harvest, yeah. but I can't do that. Every, right, nobody right. wants to hear that. Sh- nobody wants to hear the three old guys Talk talking about, about the nineties. It's, it's very surprise. It's been very surprising to us to to hear what people are, are like requesting. Right. T- to hear or realize the episodes that like kind of pop off. Like like, and I'm not even throwing Sam under the bus. I don't think, but his episode, Dude, Sam was crazy. His episode smashed. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's I like mean, he's in a clothing like, company at this point, huh? he's huge. But but like growing up, like. Shane Merrill would never I don't think anyone you know what I'm saying like he does every show in Fest in Chicago mm. right 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 and I don't think there would be the same mm. response you know what I mean yeah. and gr- granted there is the logo there, there's yeah, yeah. I understand it's there's a over. caveat but right I mean you also can retweet it to how many tens of thousands that of people that follow Triple B you know mm-hmm. what I mean like yeah. you know and yeah, I mean, I think, you know, which we always try to get our buddy uh, JL from Albany on our podcast, but he mm-hmm. won't really do it. He's going to do ours for sure. Uh, oh, know, is it going to be a race to it? Like, he wants to do it. but I, like, think, I, think, he's, I think he's hesitant, but he'll, he'll do it. We're going to very private. We'll, we'll call it the Between You and Me episode. Yeah, Between You and Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, honestly. Yeah. Um, but he is a champion of the, the last decade of hardcore, time. if big you really time. think I mean, about he's, what he's, he's done. Really kinda, One of the curators. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's done some stuff. He like changed the, like, the vibe of hardcore. Yeah, he between it, like your record, your record, brought it back to, to the like, way it should yeah. be. You know? yeah, yeah, I mean, I like. I mean, I go more heavy than I know. Any, you. Yeah, I mean, I know. You. I like everything. What are like, what are what's it? Give me a give me a like a a solid five bands from like 
when you're you consider yourself well into your adulthood you're looking at hardcore in the lens of like man i've been part of this thing for a long time right what are five new bands in that frame where you kind of felt a shift in uh in, in hardcore like a big change a whole, yeah big change um and that you liked where you were like oh this is awesome that this is happening like how far back have we gone yeah yeah What's the time frame? Like into your adulthood, where oh, okay. you're like, I'm here. I, this is my life, and uh, this is a new band to me. So maybe 2000s and beyond. Yeah, 2000s beyond. American Nightmare. Yeah, huge, huge. Like, changed the game. Yeah. Like people that were in hardcore bands already were like, we're gonna do this. Yes. Yeah. A, a band that was instrumental in getting me into hardcore at the time. I mean, how couldn't it be? Yeah. Like, if it's like, if you like heavy stuff, they're like, they look awesome. Mm -hmm. They sound awesome. It's fast. Truly, Eric's one of the amazing. first bands that that was looked. Like, yeah, we're gonna wear nice stuff while, <laughs> yeah. while we play. You guys song. had eighteen visions though. They were that's, sharp. That's fashion. You know, that's this is just like we look yeah. fucking awesome. Just look yeah, good. yeah, yeah. And that's like, like that's black. real fashion. Okay, American right? Nightmare. Yeah. American Nightmare. Good, good for sure. Um. T Y. Yep, that, yeah, that, that was the first cool. one that came to mind. I feel like they were like the, they changed it. They killed what, <laughs> I, what I'd the like American to go back. Nightmare. Yes. Kind of, yeah, I would yeah. like to wow. go back one step. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No warning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ill time. blood and Incredible. the seven inch, uh, like unbelievable. Yeah. It, that new record is awesome. Mm -hmm. You need, like people need oh, to give uh, that new uh, like tour, tour, tour culture. culture. Yeah, it's very good. Filthy. It's yeah, we did the tour with them on that. I saw that. It was very good. I was at the Brooklyn Bazaar show. I was there. I was at the Subterranean show. Hey, yeah, I was standing in the back. I was yeah, standing I would right up front. In the back, so. Yeah, it's just, I'm not trying to get moshed. That was my first time seeing The Warning. They're, dude. I never got to see him back yeah. in the day. I was just too late for that. But I think they were a They brought, like, Big they time. were the best New York hardcore band in a very long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's full stop. Yeah, the best like, New York hardcore band. The best band, Canadian New York, New York yeah, hardcore I mean, they really were. Because then that begat, like, you know, like, Guns Up. Oh, that. Backtrack. Cruel, cruel Hand. Cruel Hand. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think backtrack was a big part of it. And I then also, past five. we've yeah. talked like about the, that with Dan at length. That like they they yeah, like, they turned long like li they merged Long Island and New York in a way that nobody else. Long really Island was ever always could. so different. Yeah. It was never like neglect was like part of like right. you mm -hmm. know like I like neglect would play this place called Bond Street with like bands like, um, but yeah, I mean, I so all right so. Ty, I'd say Half Heart had a big, big yeah, time. it's undeniable, huh? Yeah. So we have uh, yeah, I'm going I'm no right. warning. Ty, Half Heart, American, American Nightmare. Nightmare. And then, fuck. That's really tough. What would I say? In like I'm trying to think what else. I mean, there's been so many. But, like, both of your bands have imp impacted, like. We did some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I don't know if, like, Code Orange sounds like Code Orange without, like, you. Mm -hmm. We played together at um, Rainfest. We were just talking about 2010? Yep. Yep. And it was, but, I mean, now, like, you look at the line, you're like, we played with you guys in Arizona. Switching Tongues played. It was nails, drop dead, and decision. Oh, yeah, the role. fest thing. Yeah, I had no shot. voice that day. Yeah. Oh, and, and the whole show was shot. Yeah. Disgrace played and had a really good set upstairs. Yeah. And that's yeah. a big room. A Nile, the Nile. Upstairs. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I would I would yeah. throw Terror into that mix. I think they... Oh, yeah. I mean, they, yeah. I think they have an undeniable position in that in that top. They're in the Mount yeah. Rushmore. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. I hate yeah. to do... You know, Terror definitely belongs in it, but I feel like... That ages me because it's like I've named like four bands within five years. But you know but, what I mean? but it, that is all so the Gen the bands generations we were are different. The bands that we were talking about all before all them earlier, all those New yeah. York bands, youth bands, and all that stuff. Like that's like foundational. Mm -hmm. We're talking right. about the next levels that are built upon it. That that right. we're like you're an adult. You're like oh, I'm witnessing a change. Like I'm witnessing this happen. Yeah, I mean, Terror was just like the heaviest thing, and every band changed to meet them. Like when Lowe's of Low right. came out, everyone's like, "Oh, this is what we're gonna do." Yeah, so this, this is what the, we call a paradigm shift. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Hatebreed too. Oh, dude, oh like, geez, that's number one. Goat. How did we not even? <laughs> but they're another band that, like, when Satisfaction came out, it wasn't that wild. But then, but then that, took, that's then why like, they didn't do another one for five, five years. years. Right. It, then it, it was like it became this self-sustaining thing. They're one of those bands. Like, you ever see a band like, and they're playing a song for the first time, like it's not recorded yet, but you're like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. They remember when they used to do those Stillborn Fest. Of course. Mm -hmm. So we played right before it was 2002. It was like right before Perseverance came mm -hmm. out. We did a bunch of like uh, shows with them and like Converge and like they played Proven and that last riff. Wow. And I was like, oh, 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 oh this is this where now. you're going. This yeah, is what's yeah. happening. That's like, awesome. It's like one of those things. You're like, holy, that's really special. like that's like a oh, this is a hardcore a band playing a Slayer riff. Yeah, yeah that's like half time. Kill. And that and then that look at what that became. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, exactly. But, like that was a record. That was a time that you see and you're like. Oh, like, oh, 
this is nothing. Like right. satisfaction was nothing right. compared to this. Wow. Like, well, yeah. Tom, this was wonderful. Thank I you talked for being a lot. Here. Sorry. No, we're no, no, no. This, this is, is what the people want. Yeah, we'll we'll have you back on. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. We'll, we gotta have we'll a crossover. Come on we'll we, the, I would love to do that. We'll do we really the full should. crossover. Yeah, we'll It'll be that. amazing. That would, that's a good idea. Yeah, thank you. We should do like we'll record them at the same half time. Half and half. Boom. Boom. Beautiful. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for the check out indecision. Thank check out Action Grind, the first ever hardcore podcast. And now here we are in, the, in their in their footsteps. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank, Thank you. you for watching. We will see you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bing.